Hi, I'm Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. So we're going to be painting this cute little pumpkin spice latte wood cutout in just a moment. This is the design we're going to be painting on August 17th. So if you guys want to learn how to paint that gorgeous buffalo plaid, how to do some really cute pumpkins, and how to um, cut out a door hanger, we've got all the steps lined out for you. You're not going to have to try to figure anything out on your own. Um, it's just $10 to participate. Um, so you guys, if you don't want to cut your own blank for the fall challenge, you can get the blank from us. See, it comes laser etched with all of the design etched on it, just like you see here. Um, but if you want to save money and you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you can cut your own wood blank. We have the template for you. We have a video showing you how to do it, how to use the template and everything. So you're not going to have to figure it out on your own. And it's only $10 to participate. <laughs> So um, let's get started painting this little pumpkin spice latte. This was a design I came up with last year. And so it's in our shop uh, at shopdoorhangers.com if you want to go and buy it. This is actually a 12-inch size cutout. I know it's difficult to see that when it's laying on the table. But for size comparison, I'll hold it up here. It's a 12-inch cutout. 12 inches is kind of small for a door hanger. So what I use this as, I use it as, as either a like a second piece that you can attach to a door hanger or um, as a wreath attachment or a porch sign attachment or sometimes just sitting on a little shelf would be super cute. So it's got lots of different uses for this size. The one hanging behind me is the one we're going to be teaching, which is the 20 inch size. It is perfect as a door hanger. Okay, so the color I'm using is light mocha and we're just going to get a flat tip brush, not a real large one, just a flat tip. So we're just going to paint the top part of our, this is like the lid of our Starbucks cup, if you will. We're going to pretend like it's kind of like a Starbucks cup. And we're just going to paint this light mocha. It's like an off-white color. And there's already lines etched in the door hanger, so you can kind of use those as a guide. I kind of do, kind of don't. Sometimes I stay in the lines and sometimes I don't. So it's totally okay if you want to go rogue and go outside the lines. But if you're new to painting, you may want to stay inside the lines just so that you've got something to, to kind of guide you. But you're just going to give this a one good base coat like that. Go all the way across it, nice long strokes, and that'll smooth out the brush strokes. Now, I can still see the lines etched in that even after I have painted over it. So it's okay if I need to go back and add some details later. Well, door hangers is what I focus on 100% over on my page on Southern Adornments Decor, and it is what I have built my business on. I started out doing paint parties in my hometown, teaching women and um, just selling painted door hangers, and then I started doing them on Facebook Live, and now I'm 100% online teaching door hanger painting, and I even have a membership called the Painter's Clubhouse where we teach uh, door hangers every single month and different techniques that you can use on door hangers. Um, and so if that actually is opening up August 25th. So if you're interested in learning more about door hanger painting, that is 100% what I do and I can help you with that. I've got a little picture up here because it's been a while since I painted this one. Okay, so just the lid is cream colored. The next part that we're going to do is this color here. It's called Pebble. And um, it's, it's a really soft brown color. So this Pebble color, we're going to use it around this is going to be an actual color of the cup and then the middle part will be like the little sleeve that keeps your hand from getting burned so we're just going to paint this area here pebble now all the paints that i'm using are deco art americana uh, matte acrylics they don't have any gloss to them i prefer to add my gloss later when i seal my my door hangers And I just think that the matte paints paint much smoother. I don't like the gloss ones as well. So we're just going to take, paint the top and the bottom part this color. Avoid painting over the pumpkin. And I think one coat is actually going to do it on these colors because they the background color is so is kind of similar, you know. So um, they're covering really well. The next color we're going to use. Is my like all-time favorite green. It's called Hauser Medium Green. This is like my most beloved color of green and um, I haven't used it in a while so I've been missing it. I've been using some brighter greens during the summer but I really like this one. So this is the color that we're going to paint the center part of our door hanger. So pretty. 
Look how pretty that green is. How did you do the split screen? It's so nice. We, um, it's called OBS. It's a, a free software. It's a little tricky to learn how to use, but that's what I use, OBS. And it streams into Facebook. So technically, it has a little bit of technical glitches at times, but I really do like it once when it works. It had a glitch the other, well, actually, I don't even know if it was OBS that glitched or if it was my computer, but my entire computer rebooted the other day in the middle of a Facebook Live and shut me down. So I really hope that does not happen today. I don't know why it happened the other day, but I completely lost the live stream. And um, it's only $10, and you're going to get um, the template that you can print out on your computer at home. I'll get, I have a video showing you how to lay out the template, how to use it, and then I have a video showing you how to trace it on the wood, how to cut it out of the wood using a jigsaw. Now, you could also use a scroll saw or any other kind of saw that you prefer. Um, but if you're new to cutting wood, jigsaw is very easy to learn. Um, and it's very easy to manipulate and maneuver. It's not an intimidating power tool, so don't let it scare you. And so I have a video completely walking you through how to cut it using a jigsaw. Um, if you don't want to cut it, you don't have to. You can get the wood blank from us. You even get a 20% off coupon code as a participant of the challenge that you can use to go and buy the blank. And we will ship it to you. Uh, I can't guarantee that the blank will arrive before the videos start, but we will do our best. We are shipping them out every single day, and we have already run out of cutouts. We had 100 of them already cut out, and we've already had to ship out all 100. So... I have got some more cutting, and it'll we'll be shipping them out as quick as they're available. So the sooner you order, the more likely you are to get it before the challenge begins. But the challenge actually starts August 17th, and um, it's a three-day challenge. You don't have to be able to, or actually maybe four days, like four days, but you don't have to be able to um, watch them live because they're all actually pre-recorded, and so. Um, even if you can't watch on the 17th, you'll be able to catch up and you'll have access to those videos um, to watch any time for up to a year afterwards. And so even if you can't participate with us that same week, but I really hope that you can. I hope that you'll be able to to participate with the group because it's just so much such a better experience when you're doing it with a group of people. Um, that's the way it is in our Painters Clubhouse membership. When we're all sharing our pictures and our creations together, we get more inspired by watching each other. And it's just a much more fun and um, greater learning experience when you do it that way. Okay, let me find, we're going to use this burnt sienna color to kind of do some shading on our pumpkin. It's a, a reddish brown burnt sienna. And I'm actually, I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to get a little angle brush. Let me find one. Here we go. And I'm going to use the longer tip of the angle. I'm going to dip the whole thing in orange to start with. And then I'm going to get the longer tip and dip it in a little bit of burnt sienna. Can you see that? And we're going to start right here in the middle. And my brush is a little damp or dry, so I got it a little bit of water. Let me get a little more of that burnt sienna. You want your brush or your paint to stay damp and workable. If you struggle with that, you can use water or matte fluid medium, and that'll help. And we're just going to kind of create the illusion that this pumpkin is more rounded. By keeping that darker color toward the outside of my strokes. See that? So pretty. I'm going to dip in a little bit more, and we'll do this part here. Whoops, I got a little too much there. Let's get back a little bit more orange and smooth that out. It's okay. It's just paint. <laughs> That's the great thing about it. You can keep working and playing with it till you get it the way you want it. Get a little bit more orange. I may even take just a tiny bit of this color, the off-white, and add it in the middle parts of the pumpkin to make them look lighter so that there's a little bit of shadow there. Or not shadow, but highlight. See what, I, see what it's doing? I'm getting a little bit more of the original orange and a little bit of that lighter color and adding a highlight. 
makes the pumpkin look bigger and rounder. I got a little too much on that part there, but we're, we're going to keep working at it and getting it, fix it. Add some more dark sienna in there. And just keep adding color till it looks like I want it to look. That looks better. Okay, let's do this side of the pumpkin now. It's looking good, isn't it? I'm impressing myself. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? You start to paint something, you're like, oh, I don't know how this is looking, and then you start to impress yourself a little bit. That's what was happening there. I started impressing myself. Because sometimes things start to look like a hot mess, and then I start to impress myself when they actually, when I look up and see it on the video, and I'm like, oh, it looks better from further away than I thought it did up close. Now I'm getting a little bit of the hot lighter color going to add a little bit of that as a highlight. A little bit of the darker color. I want some of that down here on the bottom. And then the regular orange. I just keep adding the three layers of color to kind of create the depth that I want. The burnt sienna is on the outside. The orange is all over. And then the the lighter color, that white, is right there in the middle mixed with the orange. Okay, I'm also using this dark chocolate color, not the burnt sienna, but the dark chocolate to do a little bit of a, a stem right there. Okay, and then let's see. Um, Okay, and then I had some stripes on this part here. I think I'm going to mix colors to make the stripe color. I'm going to use the original color pebble that I used um, to do the, the lighter brown. And then I'm going to add a few drops of dark brown to it and see what that does. Let's mix that together. Okay, that didn't make that dark enough, so I'm going to use a drop of black, actually. Now black goes a long way, so I'm going to use one drop and mix. I just wanted a shade or two darker, not not a lot. All right, let me see if this is dark enough. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Let's mix a little bit more black in it. See if we can get it a little darker. It wasn't hardly showing up on top of. Let me add a little bit more brown. Oh, sorry, Marion, I totally forgot to answer the second part of your question. She said, what about signing it? Um, I have in the past, not always, but I have in the past signed the back of them. I didn't always do this, but I was selling a bunch of them at my event in Nashville back in March, a bunch of my painted ones. And so I went through and signed the back of every single one and I put the year on it that I had painted it. And so I think that's a great idea if you want to um, kind of, I just think it's kind of cool because it, it, um, I don't know. It just makes it seem like you can look back over time and see when you painted it. And of course, the person who receives it is going to appreciate that because it's they'll remember who gave it to them and or who made it in what year. I don't know. It was just kind of neat to see how far my painting skills had come since the year that I painted some of them. So, all right. Can you see those stripes? They're very subtle, but we're adding some stripes in to our cup. And it's going to be a little striped cup. And I'm just using a small, real skinny flat tip brush to do this. There we go. Stripes on our cup. <clears throat> okay, so what I just did, sorry, I was talking. I mixed a little bit of dark green in with my current color green because I wanted a slightly darker shade of green. And now I'm going to dip my little round sponge pouncer in this paint. And we're going to add some cute little polka dots that aren't going to show up. Hang on. <laughs> it wasn't dark enough. All right. We're just going to go straight up with the dark green. This is Hauser dark green. So it's the next shade up of green from the last one that we used. There we go. <laughs> the color I mixed was not showing up well enough. And sometimes it's the little tips and tricks that people teach you um, that make all the difference. Like this right here. Let me show you. So like this little trick right here, this is using a sticky note as painter's tape. Look, and I can do a little dot that goes half on and half off right there. And then I can do another one right over here, same way. Ta -da! And it just makes it super simple to add 
your polka dots. Whoops. And here's another trick. <laughs> you are going to learn all kinds of tricks today. I just got green paint on my pumpkin. So if you've got a fresh baby wipe, it can't be a dried out one. The other one that I was using was really dried out. You can take it and gently rub and it will erase. You don't rub real hard or it'll accidentally take off more paint than you want it to. Oh, and I actually made a mess down here too and it was already starting to dry. Let's see if we can get it to come up. I'm just rubbing real gently with my baby wipe. I should have got to this one before it dried. I'm all actually having to rub and scratch a little bit. It's not taking the orange up necessarily, but it is picking up. It was this color right here. I must have touched it when it was still wet. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Can't even tell that it happened. Okay. Let me finish my polka dots. I feel like a squirrel right now. I'm getting way too distracted too easily. I'm going to use two, two baby, or two, not baby wipes, um, sticky notes to do this one. We'll do one kind of half right here. There we go. Boom. So easy. Um, so it's just little tri tricks and tips like that that sometimes make your painting life and skills so much easier to manage. Okay, so let's finish this up by adding some cute little details. Um, let me pull my picture up and make sure I didn't forget anything. Sometimes I get to talking and forget the fun details. Okay, I'm going to do this with a round tip brush. But in the past, and sometimes I use a paint pen. But I'm going to show you today with a round tip brush how I would do it. I'm actually going to water my black paint down just a smidge so that it works a little easier. Added just a few drops of, of, paint, of water to it. And I'm using a really skinny paintbrush. And we're just going to do some cute little dots like that. This adds a little bit of whimsy to it. And we're not going to try to trace everything perfectly. Maybe do a line there. Do a quick line across there. A line across the top. Come down here, maybe do another few dots. And then a line across there. So there's our details on the lid, pretty simple. And then you can do some cute little details going around the edge of the cup, like that. You can do this with a paint pen. It gives it a completely different look with a paint pen. To me, it looks a little bit more hand-drawn and whimsical with a brush. I like doing it both ways. It just depends what mood I'm in, really. <laughs> and then let's do some on the pumpkin. And my trick to doing these is to get your paint nice and workable, like with a little bit of water. Whoops, and see how that trailed off right there and I lost it? Let me dip a little bit more, start where I left off, and then try to trail it on down. But I, I don't always correct those little spots. It's only if I kind of want want that detail and I kind of messed it up right there but you know it's not gonna be perfect okay and then we're gonna rinse our brush and get a little bit of white and do the same thing only we're not gonna outline we're gonna highlight and I'm not gonna water my white down same brush and we're just gonna add a cute little squiggle right there some little highlights on our pumpkin just anywhere that the light would bounce off. May I add some to the lid like that. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we can do, um, you could do some lettering on this if you wanted to. I think I'm gonna leave mine alone for right now because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. If I use it as a porch sign attachment and my porch sign says, welcome, I may not want the word happy fall right in the middle of the word welcome. I may just want the cup and the pumpkin. So you can add lettering to this if you want to. Um, in the past, I've done the words happy fall y'all on there that way. Or I think I've done hello fall because happy fall y'all is a lot of words. And so I will see you all next time. Thank y'all for joining me. Don't forget to share the love. Bye y'all.